Hey everyone, welcome to Crest TV, your weekly hookup with Crest John and everything going on in the UC and collaboration industry. I'm really excited about today's show. We have our good friends from Microsoft uh, joining us. Uh, but before I bring uh, Tom from Microsoft out, just want to remind you, uh, we're doing this every week for you. Please tell your friends, hit the subscribe, ring the bell notification and tell us what you'd like to see. I'm haphazardly putting these shows together and grabbing people to talk about stuff, but I have no idea if you're interested. So do let us know in the comments if this is something that you want to hear more about and who you'd like us to get on the show. As I mentioned in that intro, on this week's show, we're talking with Microsoft about a study that they've done in conjunction with the Work Trends Index Group. And I'll bring out my guest uh, joining me this morning, this afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. Tom, how are you doing? Hi, Neil. How are you doing? Yeah, really good, thank you. Yeah, great to be on the show and um, thanks for having me. Yeah, very good. So Tom Hall from Microsoft. Tom, for those who don't know you, uh, and everyone I think does in the industry, but tell us a little bit about what you do there at Microsoft. Um, okay, so uh, I've been at Microsoft now for six and a half years, um, working across various different uh, parts of the UK uh, organisation, working um, with our distribution business, and then um, more recently, the last four or five years, uh, working with the OEM side of the business with uh, manufacturing and that kind of stuff at my heart. Um, I love new tech, I love new gadgets, um, and then uh, recently I've been working um, in the last couple of years with Crestron, um, helping you guys um, land uh, and bring in all of your new tech. Um, you, you know, uh, all of that stuff is, um, again, really why I come to work. Um, and uh, yeah, I love what you do. Um, and uh, yeah, happy to be here today and talk to you about um, exciting MTR and Teams tech. It's very cool. So you guys, uh, this, this is a free survey you've done around uh, hybrid work. Now, we were chatting with uh, with Nikki last week, and she said, there's not enough information around this coming from, from Microsoft and Crestron. Can you do so? Well, yeah, we'll do, put a video together. So Nikki, this video is for you. Um, absolutely. Um, so we've, you, you've done this 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 survey, and we're gonna, we've got some slides and some graphs and some stuff. But again, just talk us through yeah. what this about and what you think when you look at hybrid work and the challenges that we're all going when we return to the office stay at home and, and all this kind of stuff yeah i think i think that's a great question you know, and um this is for nikki um, this is for you. <laughs> um but you know ultimately a lot of people are in a quandary okay we've been in we were working in the office two years ago then we were working at home and you know a lot of people are looking for that thought leadership around what does that next stage of work look like? Why are why are these things important? And underneath that, there's kind of there's a real human layer. So what what we did as Microsoft, and this the report is available online. We'll make sure that everybody gets the link afterwards. Um, but this is to kind of give that thought leadership so that people who run businesses, people who own businesses, people who work in business, employees can actually be armed with the right kind of knowledge and understanding that actually they can ask for things to change, things to improve, things to, um, you know, why, what's the company's strategy for hybrid? You mm. know, how do you get to a place where you as a company or, or, or an employee can actually have that conversation with people? This is where that information's kind of coming from. So what we did was we actually worked with the Work uh, Trend Index. Um, they surveyed uh, 30,000 people across 31 countries. Wow. So this is real like this is a big pot of people. This is not just 100 people um, who we just grabbed off the street. This is people who work in um, all levels of business, all sizes across the whole world. So mm. these are genuine trends. And some of them are quite kind of, wow. I mean, um, I think n number six we'll get to. Um, I was just like, really? But then when you actually think about where we've been in the last couple of years, it all kind of resonates. So um, hopefully that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, some thought leadership around hybrid and, and what the future of that means for people in work. So it's interesting. I mean, so so I mean, we've been sort of forced into this with the whole COVID thing, and you know, uh, people having to evacuate the office. But it's brought that step change, and and clearly there is a inevitability around uh, hybrid work. And again, business leaders are having to to bring major changes in their organisation. Again, talk to us about that piece of of the uh, the research first. Okay. So yeah. So that's in fact perfect uh, segue so trends number one is the inevit inevitability of hybrid work um, and you know this this has kind of got some key facts here so we keep this up for a few minutes I think 66% of leaders saying that their company is planning for space redesign around hybrid work now that is two-thirds of all business leaders are actually thinking about how they modernize that 
place of work and how work happens. Um, and again, this lovely segue to uh, things like Crestron Flex and other amazing technology that Crestron make. But, it, it, you know, it's actually a small investment now will yield long term benefits in the future. And then it's kind of how we actually cape, make that capability for employees to stay flexible, because this is the, this is the thing that kind of uh, is coming out from this report post pandemic. Um, you know, 67 percent of employees, they want in personal meetings, but then they also want collaboration. So it's kind of that juxtaposition between, you know, am I going to come to the office when I come to the office? Is the, the office going to be better or worse than the experience I have at home? We've all mm. got used to like how things are at home and, you know, we all get quite kind of um, into our little caves and kind of we get used to that level of technology. But actually the office has got to be a destination for you know, people to go to to actually still get work done. And it's actually got to yield the same productivity, which is, again, something we're going to talk about a little bit later on, um, as what's expected from any location. So, you know, it's all about, um, you know, people and place um, and making sure that the right things are in place for both of those, you know, th those situations. It, it is interesting. Again, you know, people have made those in investments. I, th I think we were talking last week, you know, about people who are still using inbuilt cameras on on laptops you know and it's like why you know if you're if you're turning up if you're representing your <laughs> brand whether it be you know crestron or, or yeah. whoever you know any major brand um why would you wouldn't turn up to a physical meeting in a scruffy old pair of jeans and you know uh, you know not done your hair why would you come out looking fuzzy and out of focus and sounding terrible you know i think it's the same thing you want to represent yourself and your brand in a, in a really high quality <laughs> well i was just thinking the atlantic blue marlin co uh, yeah. really pleased with uh, the fact that i'm wearing this scruffy yeah. old t-shirt to, <laughs> to do this video cast so um yeah good job good job there but no you, you, you're exactly right the, that actual experience that you're giving like again it's not just the experience that you're getting it's the experience that you're giving other people mm. and that's true whether you're in your office using your camera or whether you're actually in going into the office and then they've not got the right meeting room equipment and um you know we've been we've all been in that meeting hey it takes you know 10 minutes to log on um you know you're kind of like looking at the wrong screen people um like you know are logging in with our laptop and then you get the audio feedback at the same time but that stuff just is happening right now on huge huge scale um, and everyone's pissed off with the kind of the quality of that experience um, and you know how do we go and make sensible decisions about how you know what that long-term inevitability of what that looks like you know is there less infrastructure is there less premises but then higher quality premises um, do will works you know finance look a bit different towards kind of the benefits they give to home employees because again these are all questions that companies need to ask and think about how they actually then provide for their their employees to get that amazing experience and their customers ultimately so um yeah like it's all it's all like now is the time to think about it and it's not going away Mm. And, and it's interesting. So, you know, we, we've always sort of seen with kind of video and collaboration, you know, we used to, you know, in my his, history, we've all done like you know, big telepresence systems, which were always the kind of um, solution for the for the CEO, the CXO, the CFO. And the actual worker bees never got access to those those tools. because It was all about, oh, yeah, saving their cost of their first class and business class flights. And that's what justified the, the solution. But now, again, this is... For, for the for the masses or for the many not for the few How, what kind of trends came out of the, the the survey around the equitability and the accessibility of this to the whole staff well, well actually the the second point is that um it's still not very equitable although yes um the people aren't flying first class anymore because they're all doing their meetings on teams uh, what we're seeing is actually the second fact um is the business leaders that are faring better than their employees so when you look across kind of all of these different segmentations that we've kind of pulled out there um, you can actually see that there is a weighting towards the thriving side of things actually being, you know, business leaders who have got that great tech and having that, um, you know, better experience. They're doing really well. Mm. Uh, but then when you actually um, just go back to the graph really quickly, mm. when you look at actually um, those, uh, for example, G Gen Zs, um, you know, people who are single, um, you know, let's think about that for a second. So you've been in lockdown, um, you're um, on your own, um, you've got less um, kind of people to talk to um you, you know a lot of your social interaction is only through your pc um and actually you've probably not been given the right equipment at home to then have those great meetings um that's kind of a real concerning kind of 
area for people where actually that needs to be considered a lot more, I think, by businesses is kind of people's personal circumstances. And it's not just for the people at the high end of the company. Um, yeah, 37% of employers um, are saying that they're, uh, you know, our employee uh, employees are asking that they're asking too much um, in terms of, you know, that kind of feeling of struggling. Um, it's just taking a lot out of people. So um, I think there is consideration, like a personal consideration within the trends that we need to look at, Neil. It's not as simple as um, who's the top dog in the company and they should get all of the, you know, yeah. the goods. Um, I need the whole business to function. I need everybody to feel like they're invested. I need to make sure that I actually understand that my, you know, what my employee struggles. Um, and, you know, there's just a little bit of empathy which actually all of these kind of facts kind of um, allude to. There, there is a very, very empathetic um, kind of under un, undertrend through through these stats. So we moved to, to part three or, or mm. facts. Three. This is kind of the empathy is kind of pushed down a little bit, I think, because um, what we're actually seeing is people are doing a lot more productivity um, and actually people are exhausted. Um, and certainly, you know, I feel like that when I jump off of a day literally sitting in front of my screen um back to back to back phone calls where you know you often don't even have a time to go to the Wii uh or you know what a personal break or whatever it is you know you just you need to like you have to almost apologize for leaving your desk to go and grab a sandwich um bonkers, actually, isn't it? well this is so we're actually doing more on paper mm. um, and often we kind of need to have the ability to say no to stuff mm. Um, you know, I wish Neil, when Neil called me, I should have said no. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, look, I think I think the th- I think the thing is actually there's an immediacy to this work because it's all digital because everybody can see when you're online. They've got you've got a little green tick next to you, um, and that you know, 50 percent of people are saying that they respond to a che- Teams chat within five minutes or less. Mm. That's because. When I see someone that's green online, I'm like, well, they they're, they're not doing anything because the, they're green. Yeah, um, so got the, the feet up. People, they're you know <laughs> sitting you watching YouTube. Yet. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's this, <laughs> this, this almost demanding. They're culture. waiting for my message to come through. <laughs> <laughs> but this is it like like it's it's that instant kind of um you know i'll you know punch you punch out to somebody get the information back um certainly oh, i've had one or two bosses who feel that their messages are more prioritized than everybody else's um but you kind of have to have that self-control and self-awareness that actually um just because people are online you know hang on a second this person is online at 11 o'clock at night yeah. That's not working. Um, they're probably just, you know, trying to squeeze stuff in and do like people are people are doing more longer. Yeah. Um, the commute has disappeared. Um, and actually what's happened when the commutes disappeared is that we've replaced that with more working hours, yeah. um, which all of this stuff kind of doesn't necessarily feel good for the employee. So, you know, I think there's, you know, how do companies put policies in place? How do they make sure that people aren't you know, going to exhaust themselves and burn themselves out. These are all things that um, absolutely need to be thought about, Neil. Yeah, um, I, yeah I was going to say, so I, I very, very, you know, whenever I've had my meetings with Microsoft, Microsoft is very good, actually. There's always that old trend of, like, meetings are an hour long. And even if they're a half-hour meeting, we'll stretch them out to be an hour because that's just how things have, have been in the past. But recently I've seen from Microsoft that they've been scheduled 45-minute meetings. I don't know if that was a, a move from Microsoft that then you had then that 15-minute window in between your next one at the top of the hour and again i saw that and was you know very gracious of that from let's say microsoft making that change because if you were in an office you wouldn't be able to get from meeting room one to meeting room two instantaneously as you can from teams meeting one to teams meeting two so the fact that you know you've got that kind of walking room or virtual walking room between your next meeting to be able to gather your thoughts have a cup of coffee take a breath check your emails look at your ims and all the rest of it i think you know that was to say something that i saw um quite early on from microsoft and i thought that was a, a really good move so yeah it is a a real challenge i think from a fatigue point of view of people going from you know one virtual meeting back to back to back yeah, no, I'm, uh, you know, I'm talking about sort of, you know, Microsoft's big corporate engine from that perspective. And they, you know, they, you know, they do think about kind of how do we optimize this for our employees? And, you know, there is a recognition that actually you need to give time back to people so that they can have those water cooler moments mm-hmm. that you would normally have. You, you know, when you think about kind of your a normal meeting face to face, 
you know, you'd often go and grab a coffee before you even start. You know, that, that first few minutes, it, that doesn't happen. It's like, bang, straight into the meeting yep. now. Um, and so it's a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more uh, kind of immediate. Um, but actually that consideration piece, I think, is any company needs to probably think about, again, how they allow for that for their employees. Yeah, and I guess the the one thing about employees is is the different demographics of employees. You know, we're we're you know a little bit longer in the tooth of uh, of our our careers, but there's there's been a lot of new generations coming into the workforce during the pandemic, and yeah. you know obviously they've not had that experience of you know the traditional face to face meeting for five, ten, fifteen, twenty years they're they're coming in and they they are more kind of fed by the instantaneous kind of social media and and things happening how is this affecting you know the new generations coming into the workforce so you know if we think about um the fourth fact which is all about gen z's actually and and that younger workforce they've spent less time in the workforce right so they don't have necessarily have the same longer relationships um that people have been able to lean on during the pandemic so 60 percent of, of gen z so asia between 80 18 and 25 are saying they are surviving or they're flat out and mm. um, there's there, there's like a much there was much higher stress in that kind of age group um i think partly because again they haven't necessarily built up that sort of muscle around the relationships because the length of time they're there but a lot of them are kind of new into the workforce and starting in the workforce for the first time and it's I you know I think incredibly hard for anybody to to have started a new role in a new company you know during during the last couple of years and I'm really hoping that well, I, I'm just hoping that you know that you know if the pandemic has caught taught us anything with this whole hybrid thing is again when and where we can actually mix with people and how we can re-energize, you know, that kind of workforce, um, that whole new workforce and how they can get the most out of using technology to counteract this this kind of challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, again, they, they are a different, you know, age and uh, they've got different ways of working and different styles of working to the to the more traditional boomers and and to a gen x and again the technology and the way in which they'll embrace technology will be will be different you know they're much more driven by these things than you know traditional telephone telephony or from you mm. know using their pc they're going to drive everything from a mobile and they're probably more likely to want to be um mobile and, and on the move as well so again it's a real uh, interesting challenge as we look to embrace hybrid and these different um demographics and different uh, requirements that they're going to have when we build out the uh the, the workforce now go on no, I was going to say that leads us to kind of being siloed in teams, because if you think about and that's the fifth fact, um, and I feel like I'm sort of jumping through these a little bit. But actually, when you think about how, again, these new people to the workforce, they don't have the big community. And because they don't have the big community, they're actually going on to calls, talking to people and then getting off and then going to the next call. So we're actually finding that we're working in smaller groups, smaller one to one groups, but actually things are less personal and people are feeling more siloed. And it becomes almost like a little bit like a work echo chamber. So, again, these are things that we really, really need to be careful of. How do we use the technology in a good way, but then also think about the social piece of it and then also then how that brings in the return to work? team building days um you know going for a drink afterwards in the to the pub like like how do we make these things that's that's important neil yeah uh, absolutely. <laughs> like how you know how do we make sure that we actually still keep keep this in in the modern way of work yeah absolutely um, and uh, this is kind of like my this is my sad fact so if we jump through to fact six Go on. um and um i'm not going to do this now but i think one in six people have cried with a co-worker over the last uh the last year or so um I, you know i just think you know and obviously it's higher in some some than others so obviously you know he- healthcare has um you know really been a challenge but actually not just thinking about covid and that kind of thing you're in your home you're um in your safe space um, and actually, uh, you know, it's something as simple as, you know, your technology not working and a really important meeting. Um, you know, these are things that actually I think, pe- you know, people are being much more human. And then I think there's also within that the, the thing that we mentioned before, the underlying trend of empathy. You know, I think people need to be much more empathetic to their fellow employees because, yeah. 
you know, you don't have an IT department at home. You know, things are going to go wrong. Um, I've got some builders out there and I'm dreading the mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a drill <laughs> coming. I'm like, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. I'm doing the live chat. Te- teams has got great noise suppression. Don't worry, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, but it, and, and if I haven't got blurred background on, so um, like genuinely he could pop his head around the corner at any second. So these kind of things are all concerns that we have. And actually, I think we just need to be more um, accepting of, of, of those things. Yeah. And then I suppose... Sorry, Neil. I was going to say, can you can you remember that fantastic BBC um, uh, interview where there was the chap and the the kid then ran in and the the, the kind of nanny then ran in and all the the wife ran in and grabbed the child and all this was going on in the background. You were kind of like, you know, back then it was kind of you kind of thought oh, it's so unacceptable that this you know person's family could come in whilst he's on a video call but now yeah. it's like you know the dog comes in the cat comes in the kids come in it's like it's acceptable and and as you say it's there is that challenge where we have a lot more on our plates i you know maybe we've got someone who's you know sheltering at home maybe they're ill maybe you have to go and pick your kids up from school halfway through the day and then you've got to look after them plus take your calls balancing that kind of work-life balance when you're in the office you're kind of untouchable you're miles away from the the home and you're miles away from that and it's you know you you can't deal with that but when you're at home and all this stuff is going around on around you it is a lot more challenging and there is a lot more pressure and I think people will get more stressed of having all of these different um, you know elements going on during the day which is uh, going to be really challenging for a lot of people. No absolutely I think um, also within this as well there's uh, you know the kind of the thought process around well you know people you know where do you get people from to do the you know the, like we can involve how we actually work um as businesses um and actually there's a there's a real opportunity i think to have um different talent coming from different places as well so if we think about that from a positive perspective i think um somebody i was talking to actually recently has got a they've got a small business and they've always had a nightmare getting somebody to do their basically working for them like a receptionist and doing it their admin and, and that kind of stuff they actually now in a situation where they have somebody working for them i think um they're based in basingstoke and the person working for them is is in birmingham okay. um, oh yeah all the bees yeah. um, and, they, and they job share that person's time remotely um they uh, you know they have them two days a week um so they can afford them and um, they you know they're not working in the same town and city but the admin's getting all done the, this kind of concept of of uh, you know global talent actually and you know that's a very small business but the, the same thing is true for any business you can go out and get people to work in the right kind of um area as you normally would but actually you can get people to do the right job um and the right thing for your company or your business which i think are you know those kind of things are, are, are exciting um so um you know from that regard um those are the trends really that i wanted to talk about today hopefully they were of interest we will make sure that um we give you the link to share with all your crestronites um is that what you are your crestronite um, um yeah i guess so but this is this is global so you know it's yeah. not just it's not just limited to restaurant our competitors and the world yeah. we're trying to obviously solve problems for people and companies and businesses and being you know thought leading in this information and it is a free we're going to put the link in the description um tom's going to send me over the, the deck or the link that we can get the deck to you so if you want to go into more detail or to share these or use these when you're looking at your hybrid working or return to office strategies for your businesses um we'll give you this information again it's great that microsoft have put this together and uh, are giving this information out obviously providing the tools to allow you to do this work but then also being able to provide you the information um, to do that so absolutely fantastic um and thank you for uh, coming on and, and walking us through these uh, these six uh, points of us today tom um where can people hook up with you where do you hang out these days are you uh, a linkedin of course you're a linkedin are you a twitter right uh, where do you kind of uh, hang out where can people hook up with I, you um like linkedin is probably the best place to get hold of me um yeah i'm not um on all of the socials just uh, just the ones that um add value to my life very very good well thank you ever so much for uh, coming on and joining us on this episode of crest tv and thank you all for tuning in hopefully you found a lot of this information useful and again we are trying to not just you know bombard you with uh, information on the great crestron products but also to provide you information around our partners and also thought leading information that allows you to be able to build um, your plans and to uh, enhance the information that we put out we do this every week it is free it is on youtube hit subscribe hit 
hit link, tell your friends, give us a thumbs up, uh, share it out and tell people on LinkedIn, Twitter and wherever you hang out, maybe in the pub. Um, and I'll see you on next week's uh, Crest TV. Thanks. <laughs>